Hey guys, Clavof here, and today we will be going over five tips for running a server with commands as well. So the first tip, which is uh, should be a no-brainer, but do not get Essentials. So the Essentials plugin is a plugin that people commonly get when they're first starting out a server. I even got it personally on my first server and quickly figured out just how annoying it is. So let me give you a use case example. And I'm sure that there will be somebody out there who says, oh, you can do this and this and that to fix this. And you could do this and this and that to fix that. But honestly, what Essentials adds for most people is not too great and you can probably find individual plugins that also add those very specific features that you actually are looking for uh, without adding a bunch of unnecessary stuff that you aren't looking for uh, so right out of the box if you do give at p stick it will tell you player is not found if you do give at s stick player is not found and the other factor of essentials is that a lot of times it's just going to break almost every single data pack that you throw at it uh, just because it messes with the vanilla commands or at the very least makes it some so that some vanilla commands are just not accessible. And in addition to this tip, I also want to say that when you add new plugins, they may conflict with old plugins or the data pack itself, which kind of leads me into tip number two. Tip number two is to make your own content and commands whenever you can, uh, including plugins if necessary. And the reason for that is you don't want to be stuck waiting for somebody to update a plugin that is incredibly essential for your server to operate. If you're just kind of a SMP based server, then certain things you'll be fine with or without, or you can find a replacement. But on some servers, there are just essential plugins that you need to be updated. And in those cases, it might be best for you to figure out how to code that specific plugin yourself. Uh, or ensure that you have somebody you can contact to update that plugin when you need it updated. Uh, and for the same reason with commands and data packs, some data packs are going to be inefficient or uh, not really well optimized. And they and data packs tend to break with newer updates far more than plugins because command f syntax can sometimes change just a little bit and kind of just make all the files invalid. So for that reason, you should try to use your own commands, your own data packs. And if you have to use libraries, use as few libraries as possible or be very scrupulous as to which libraries you choose. Uh, and for that reason, when you are adding new things, it's going to be important for you to eliminates what is the problem. So sometimes you may add a plugin or you may set up your server and then there is a plugin such as essentials which becomes a problem. And it can be hard the more plugins and data packs that you add to eliminate what is the problem. And for that reason, what you'll have to eventually do is just use a process of elimination. That is, you essentially have all of your plugins turned on and you just take a few plugins and disable them uh, or delete them from the file and reload the server to see if the server works once you remove those plugins. So you just stop it and restart it and see if everything works. If everything works, then you know that the one that you just disabled is the culprit. Now, if multiple things are causing problems, then that will become a real pain to try and debug. But you can kind of go through uh, turning one plugin off at a time until everything works. And then once the problem plugin or data pack is found, you can remove it and start everything up again and slowly add one plugin or data pack at a time back until something breaks or everything works. And it's a very slow and painstaking process, but that's kind of the thing you need to do to best figure out what is the problem if you are not getting any direct messages inside the console saying uh, some kind of error with a plugin. The third tip is do not shortcut subservers. So there is a plugin known as Multiverse, and this plugin is very popular for allowing you to add multiple worlds to the same exact server, which is a very cool functionality. However, it is not a shortcut to adding subservers. What do I mean by this? A subserver is another server that you can connect to, which is private. So I cannot connect to it in my server list right here, but it will become a server that only some players will be able to connect to if they come from the 
uh, network of servers, for example, if you are using Bungie, then it would become a Bungie cord server that can only be connected to by first going through the parent server, which essentially means you can only connect to it by using in-game signs or connecting while in the original server uh, to go in between them. And what that basically lets you do is it lets you uh, distribute the load of players across your servers. Let's say you have two mini games. You have Skyblock and you have Bed Wars, right? If you put Skyblock and Bed Wars in the exact same world, running commands using multiverse, the commands ran in the Skyblock world will be heard in the uh, other world. And if you try and also use vanilla dimensions to do this sort of a trick, uh, the same logic will apply in the sense that uh, the commands will not separate by dimensions, they will not separate by world. So what you will essentially just be doing is increasing the load on one server. And what this does is it increases the memory usage and the memory usage is something that costs a lot when you pay for servers you're mainly paying for ram as well as uh, whatever cpu capabilities they have but the variable that you can adjust based on your price is typically memory and ram does not come cheap However, multiple servers will typically come cheaper than having to pay for the RAM required to run multiple minigames on the same server. As you add players, complexity increases and the memory usage increases, whereas if you split it between players on one subserver and players on a second subserver, one subserver being one of your games, the second subserver being a different game, then you will effectively reduce how much you have to pay per month, even though you're paying for more than one server at a time. Uh, it will The more servers that you have added to the multi-server network, the better distributed your player base will be, and the less you will end up having to pay overall in RAM. Tip number four is actually a positive tip towards plugins. This is use plugins to shortcut and or simplify your commands in a meaningful way. So one thing that everybody loves to have on servers is roles. You want to have a way to reward people for donating. You want to have a way to have admins look different than normal players or some kind of distribution of types of players based on how long you've been playing the game. And for this reason, you could use commands to add teams with prefixes, uh, but it's better just to use a plugin to handle this because if you use the game's commands to handle uh, roles, then that means you have to use the game's commands to handle what those roles can do. You need to use the game's commands to handle the prefixes and it will actually disable you from being able to use teams because you need a separate team for a separate role. So you will no longer be able to use teams for something like a game, which could be very useful. So for that reason, use something like I really suggest luck perms, one of the best permission based uh, plugins out there and it's very well updated. It has a web editor, which looks like this, which lets you add different groups and edit the permissions kind of live. It can take a little bit to set up. I might make a video on it, but there are other videos out there, but it's really great for handling the permissions because something like permissions and something like anti-cheat is just better handled with plugins than commands. And the final tip for running a server with commands is to create a command world or a mirror of your world for single player and update those things on single player before rolling them to the main server. What I mean by that is while you can hypothetically edit commands and upload the commands in a data pack to the server and type a reload on the server and test things there, you don't want to have any bugs potentially break while players are on and playing the game. You don't want to accidentally clear everybody's inventory or kill everybody a bunch of times. Things can happen when you're working with commands that are really weird. So create everything in a single player world then push it possibly even to a second sub or secret server that you run for testing and then roll it out onto the main server. Or you can skip that depending on how small or big your server is. Uh, but regardless, you should separate the data pack work from the server running. And one sort of bonus tip for you guys is to find a server host that you like 
and that is cost effective for what you're trying to do. Personally, I used to run with MC Pro Hosting because they had the simplest UI. However, their prices are a little bit outside of my range, especially since I like to do large projects, which usually involve multiple subservers. And for this reason, they don't have a plan that is cost effective for me in terms of RAM and price per month. For a good amount of time, I ran with Shockbyte because they did have a 1 GB RAM 250 per month option. And I think that Shockbyte is a decent option if you wanna scale things because they have good customer support and will help you set things up if necessary. And they aren't too expensive. They have lower cost options so that you can kind of diversify, have multiple subservers. The one downside to Shockbyte is that their UI system is incredibly slow and the only way that you can really work with it is if you use FTP, FileZilla Access, and FTP FileZilla Access is also incredibly slow for uh, adding or deleting big folders. The current server host that I use is Revive Node Hosting, which I've done a video in the past. This is uh, partially sponsored but not sponsored in the sense that they didn't ask me to make this video but they have been providing me with a server to run tests on for quite some time now which is really cool of them uh, but you can get their one gig plan for three bucks a month which is kind of comparable to Shockbyte for that price point and a decent GPU which a lot of other server hosts do not tell you what GPUs they're running uh, and all of these detailed specs but for that price point it's decently scalable and also includes a very nice server management system using the pterodactyl daemon and they use something with docker to set things up i don't know exactly all the details but they have a really simple file management system right here where you literally just click file manager and right there you can edit the server's files which is very clean compared to something like shockbyte and if you have an archived file you can unarchive or if you have something you want to archive you can archive it and then download it uh, so it's very easy to work with here so those were five tips for running a server with commands hopefully you guys found that useful i'm going to do a few more videos about servers as well as i work on my own server uh, actually there will be a ip and a link to a discord in the description uh, for my SMP server that I am currently running just in the meantime while I work on my RPG server just as something for you guys to do uh, The discord is meant to just connect people that have similar games including Minecraft to play and hang out uh, So if you're interested in that kind of stuff go ahead and join it in the description And if you want to see more of this content, please leave a like subscribe and possibly share it with your friends who are interested in this So that I can know if this is the type of thing you guys want to see more of other than that, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.